What's up and welcome to Taiwan. My name is Luke Martin with ChopstickTravel.com and today is day one of our journey up the east coast of Taiwan. If you didn't check out the previous episode, click the link down in the description box. We started out in Kaohsiung sampling some of the best seafood the whole of Taiwan has to offer on Qi Jin Island. So I think this is the crab that we are going to eat. This is a really beautiful looking crab on the outside and I'm just gonna peel back this piece of shell and reveal that. That is pure crab meat there. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> so today we are in Taidang, which is our first stop of three up the east coast of Taiwan. We are stopping in Taidang, Hualien, and Ilan. Taidang is famous for all kinds of things and today we are going to show you three of those. The first being the natural scenery. The rice paddies, the mountains, and the beaches. Taidang is absolutely beautiful. And of course we are going to be sampling some seafood because we are right on the coast here. So we will be stopping at one of the busiest seaports on the east coast and sampling some fresh seafood. Third and finally we are going to be showing you what Taidang is really famous for being the bread basket of Taiwan producing some of the freshest and best fruit and vegetables. So right now it is early in the morning we're gonna jump on our scooter and head to have some breakfast so let's go. So we were at just a little local joint here in Taidong for breakfast. We spotted a bunch of locals eating here and we ordered up a very typical Taiwanese breakfast. So here we've got the Chong Yo Bing, which is a green onion scallion pancake and this one feels nice and crispy on the outside. And then we've also got some jiaozi, which are uh, dumplings. I think these are probably filled with pork and some scallions. And then every Taiwanese breakfast must be accompanied by some dojiang, which is soy milk. So we've got a cold soy milk. So let's dig into this. Let's start with this scallion pancake. I love how it's cut into kind of like pizza slices and I'm gonna dip it in this spicy sauce here. And that feels nice and crispy, let's try that. Mm. Yeah, super crispy. It's really just the green onion flavor. A little bit oily as well. Chase that with a little bit of soy milk. Mm. Mm. Not too sweet. It has that kind of nutty soy flavor. Next up is the jiaozi. I'm gonna dip it in the sweet sauce this time and see if these are filled with pork or not. Mm. Oh, those are really good. Those are actually quite juicy on the inside. There's a little bit of fat that rendered in there and kind of made a soup. And again, so I know. This is just the classic Taiwanese breakfast. This chong yo bing is really like flaky and kind of got a little bit of an elasticity to it, you can see, but it is really good, nice fresh green onion flavor. This is the perfect way to start our day before we head to the coast. We've got about an hour drive to the northeast to get to the coast and that's where we will be eating some seafood and showing you guys some really beautiful scenery of Taidong. So that was a surprisingly delicious breakfast seeing as though how simple it is and the, the owners here are really, really friendly. So you guys can uh, check out the description box for the information to come to this place. They also have an English menu here. So we are jumping on the scooter and we are going to head north to the coast about an hour drive, so let's go.
So we are about 45 minutes into our drive north of Taidong. We are stopping here at this beach. This is called Jinzun Beach and this is absolutely beautiful. The drive up here was amazing. It's not too hot today. Uh, quite windy actually. So our final destination for this drive is to a place called San Xian Tai, which is a bridge, a very picturesque bridge and it should only be another 15 minutes or so up uh, north. So we will go there next to show you guys that and then we will be going to Chingang Township to have some lunch, a seafood lunch. We have made it out to the beautiful Sun Shen Tai Island, as you can see behind me, which roughly translates to three immortals. And also behind me, you can see the very famous bridge. It takes you out to the island and it's built to look like waves. So we're gonna go check it out. It looks really cool. <laughs> So just a quick stop here to see the bridge. It is absolutely beautiful. It's quite windy and a little bit rainy out. So we are gonna head now, we are starving. We're gonna go get some seafood lunch. We are at the restaurant now and just check this out here. We have an incredible seafood meal, four different dishes. So let me introduce what we've got. So starting off right here, these are deep fried white bait fish. So this is actually the entire fish. It's like a very thin uh, kind of translucent fish. And you can see the little eyes there. So those look really good and then served with just some salt and pepper. And then over here, we've got some swordfish sashimi, three different cuts, and this just looks absolutely beautiful. In Taiwan, they like to cut those thick slices of sashimi. And then over here, we've got our fried rice, of course. And then last but not least is some more swordfish, but this time this is the fried up swordfish with tons of basil. So this is stir fried with basil and then that sauce, just check that out. Huge chunks of swordfish. This looks absolutely incredible. So let's dig into this. Let me grab a little bit of this rice here. I think this is stir fried with pork and then I can see all kinds of different vegetables in there and it looks quite oily. And I'm just gonna put that in my bowl and then grab some of this stir fried uh, swordfish, which just sounds incredible. Make sure I get some basil and some of those green onions, put those on top and let's try that. Mm. Mm. That swordfish, you can just instantly tell that it's nice and fresh, falls apart in your mouth. And I love that with basil. The sauce that it's kind of swimming in is a little bit sweet. And then that stir fried uh, rice is nice and smoky. Oh, that's good. Mm. Let's try one of these deep fried white bait fish. I'm gonna dip it in a little bit of salt and pepper here. And let's try that. Mm. Oh, it's really, it doesn't have too much of a flavor by itself, but the texture is really unique. It's not very fleshy. It's almost like uh, creamy in a good way though, because it's not undercooked. It's just the type of fish and then crisp on the outside from that deep fried layer. That's also really good. Last but not least, let's try this swordfish sashimi, but I need to pour a little bit of soy sauce in here first. And you can see that uh, uh, wasabi here too, although that doesn't look like the best wasabi. I'm gonna grab a piece from the middle here. This is a little bit more fatty looking. And then just a little bit of soy sauce. Let's try that. Mm. Oh, yum. Wow. That is super fatty. It tastes very similar to tuna, but there is that distinct difference, whereas you don't really get that tuna flavor. It's a little bit different because it's swordfish, but the texture is very, very oily and fatty. It just melts in your mouth. And then nice with a little bit of soy sauce. Oh man, this meal is really good. We needed this after that long drive today. Typically when you're having a big seafood meal like this, you're usually enjoying it with a lot of people and this is the thing that is always on the table here in Taiwan, the apple cider, apple cedra. And uh, let's pour myself some of this. Honestly, I love this stuff. It's a lot better than drinking Coca-Cola or something like that. And it washes down that oily Taiwanese food. Oh yeah, it's just like a little bit fruity and carbonated. The, the sashimi, the swordfish sashimi is definitely my favorite. The texture of it is just phenomenal. It just melts in your mouth. Just dip this in a little bit of soy here and that's all it needs. Oh man. Oh yeah, that is so fresh. So fresh. In fact, we are gonna go see 
where they source their fish right after we leave here. So just two minutes from the Shin Penghu restaurant is the Xingang fish market. This is the fishing port here in Chenggong and they're actually just unloading the fishing boats and then soon I think they'll have a fish auction. So we're gonna hang around and check that out. It looks really cool. <laughs> Seems as though we came just as they were unloading what seems to be the catch of the day. There's quite a crowd and they just unloaded a 160 kg swordfish. It is absolutely huge. It took six people to lift it onto the scale and I'm not sure how long it is but to me it looks like it's at least six feet or maybe longer up to eight feet. It is huge and uh, wow this market is already blowing my mind. There's lots to see here. market is absolutely insane. There's so many different types of fish here and I actually just found what I think is the biggest fish. I thought I already saw the biggest one, but this swordfish is even bigger, 215 kgs. It is absolutely massive. They're unloading tons of tuna. There is lots of mahi-mahi. I think that's the most common fish here. I saw some sharks, some sunfish, um, things I couldn't even name and this is just a bustling market. I am really happy we decided to come here and especially because they are just unloading the docks or the boats right now. Every single one of those blue tubs behind me is stuffed full of mahi-mahi. It is absolutely crazy. I don't know how many tons of fish there are here, but uh, there's definitely a lot. The auction has started. <laughs> So you can see that these tubs are absolutely stuffed to the brim with these yellow green mahi mahi. They're absolutely beautiful and this is one of hundreds of these blue tubs. Check these fish out here. I can grab one. Oh man, that is crazy. So the fish auction is done. They are moving all the fish you can see with these big machines out of the market. That was a lot of fun. Even just for a passerby like me, that was exhilarating to watch the fish auction. They move really, really fast. So here in Chenggong, this is quite a rural area of Taiwan. 
However, it is the biggest city between Hualien and Taidong on the east coast, but there's only about 17,000 people that live here, and about half of those people are aboriginals from the Amis tribe. So the fishermen here are one of the only remaining traditional fishermen left in Taiwan. So they're going out on these boats with only about three or four people, not in huge industrial sized boats. And they used to use the traditional way of harpooning the sailfish or the swordfish, but nowadays um, they do use some non-sustainable methods like gill nets. But it was a lot of fun to come here and see this. I definitely recommend that you come if you ever get the chance. And I'll leave all the information for this place down in the description box. I had a hard time finding accurate information online, but I would say that the fish market, or the fish auction, sorry, starts around 2 p.m. And we came around 1.30, they were just finishing offloading all the fish, and then the auction started right after that. So um, that's what time you should come, but that's just for today. I don't know every day if that's the fish auction time. So I'll leave all the information down in the description box. We're gonna get back on the scooter and head back to Taidong. So I literally just pulled over on the side of the road on our way back to Taidong because I spotted a farm that is growing something that is extremely famous in this region and that is known as a custard apple or sometimes people call it sugar apple or even Buddha's head fruit. So you can see right here behind me, this is it. And these ones aren't fully grown yet. They've got, I don't know, maybe another month before they're harvested. We are going to go back into Taidong and find some that are fresh and ripe and pick some up at the market, try them out and see what they taste like. All right, we're back in Taidong and we found a spot that is selling some of the Buddha head fruit. So we're gonna pick one up, take it back to our place and try it out. All right, we got our Buddha fruit. Here it is right here. But unfortunately she said, this one's not quite ripe enough. She said we should wait until tomorrow morning. So I guess we're gonna have to check back with you tomorrow morning to try out our Buddha fruit. Good morning from our guest house here in Taidong. It is breakfast time. We have coffee and we have our custard apple. So yesterday she told us we should wait until this morning to try this out and I was a little bit skeptic that it would really ripen up that much. But I don't know if you can tell, but it is very, very soft this morning. Much more soft than it was yesterday. So let me peel one of these guys open and check that out. There you can see that custardy flesh underneath. Let's take a couple of these off and then I'll go in with a spoon. Oh man, check that out. That looks really ripe. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a spoon and grab some of that flesh. Oh, and this is gonna be a good breakfast, so let's try that out. Mmm. Oh, wow. That is extremely sweet. Super, super soft, too. I think I've only ever had a custard apple maybe once before in my life. And this one is definitely better than what I remembered the last one tasting like. That is so just naturally sugary. Wow. Mmm. It does have a little bit of like a sourness too. Almost like, almost kind of like a cross between a banana and a little bit of a citrus fruit too. And you can just scoop that flesh out with a spoon, no problem. Check that out. You gotta watch out for those seeds, but man, there is quite a bit of fruit in there. Mmm. Let's chase that. With a little bit of coffee. Ah, perfect breakfast here in Taidong. Finished off with our sugar apple breakfast. That was surprisingly really, really good. We didn't know that we like sugar apples so much. Sabrina described it as like a sugary apple sauce. It was really delicious. And that's gonna be it for today from Taidong. So make sure if you're not already to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified because we have a really couple exciting videos coming out very soon. We are heading up the East Coast to Hualien. So next episode will be from there where we will be sampling some incredible Aboriginal cuisine. So make sure also to follow us on Instagram so you get the most up-to-date information on what we're doing at Chopstick Travel. So thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.